Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Joel here, and um, hope you guys have been keeping well. Today is a special, special episode. So this is a project that I've been wanting to keep under wraps for a while, but I just felt like, you know, now is the perfect time to make a special episode out of it. Fact is, I was able to work with Kevin Rudolph, the one and only. If you guys don't know who he is, you might have heard the song Let It Rock. Also, I Made It, featuring Birdman, Jay Shaw, and Lil Wayne. Kevin is most notable for working with guys like especially Wayne, Nas, Rick Ross, DJ Khaled, Birdman, and a bunch of others. Today's episode is about creating a cover artwork for the man himself. Let me give you some context on how it all happened. So first of all, I discovered Kevin's music in 2011, to be precise, and the first song I heard of him wasn't let it rock by the way it was i made it i just remember it was just 11 year old kid looking out the window going on long trips blasting the song in my ears and just visualizing this amazing real life fantasy where i've just accomplished everything that i needed to and i'm just like kicking it back in my mansion you know big big hopes and dreams as a as a kid but little did i know that three weeks prior to making this video that the entire trajectory of my career would change when kevin reached out to me on instagram saying that you know he saw my work but prior to that we have been keeping in touch for like two years we've been like you know bouncing back and forth you know just appreciating each other's stuff and i told him how much uh, it would mean to me if i ever got a chance to to work with him on uh, on an album cover because I have a graphic design degree and he's obviously in his own lane cemented himself as a uh, as a fantastic musician. I thought, okay, let's you know how about we bring our own worlds together and just just make something amazing. That would be a unique thing to do. And uh, fortunately enough, just three weeks ago, around six sixteen in the morning on September sixteenth, I get a message from Kevin saying, "Bro, can you whip up a quick cover for me?" I almost thought I was tripping at first, but it was real. It was real. I had to kind of pinch myself twice, and. <laughs> And just just tell myself that yo, this is actually happening. He he did reach out to you, and this is real. And I had to like kind of bring myself back to reality just to make sure I wasn't going a little too crazy. I was like, okay, this is my one and only chance. Give it my best shot and make sure that I just didn't want it to go south in any way possible. And Kevin mailed me the record. The moment I heard it, I was like, okay, this instantly took me back to the early 2000s. I don't know what that word is. Just by listening to those synthesizers alone, I was able to tell okay, this record definitely is. Is, is special and I, I need to inject that nostalgia factor into it but rightly so because it does justice to the sound and I wanted to make sure that if I end up making a cover it has to be a cover that is energetic enough according to the theme of the song the song by the way is about this coming of age rebellion the afterlife and how we are in this post-apocalyptic world and you've just materialized things so much brought it down to its tiniest value and the only thing that remains is the message the single beholds in the form of it being a CD and that CD being the last relic that survived this entire apocalypse. The message contained in that song is the last meaningful thing that exists and more than anything, the main aim was to get that energy going. So I started off by opening up Spotify, going through Kevin's entire discography. I made sure that I went through every single that he's put out, every album that he's put out, deriving at a common denominator between all of those covers and uh, put together a mood board, made sure that uh, each and every single one of these uh, covers, especially the ones that stood out to me the most in terms of its uh, messaging, composition, and w the ones that I felt were more true to Kevin's nature, I put them all together on a mood board. Just saw it come all together because it was something that had to be nailed thoroughly. And it was more so about studying his nature so that before I even go ahead and make one draft of the of the artwork i know where it's supposed to be headed as far as the general direction is concerned and the observation that i've made was that they all have this uh, this message of being completely distinct and it's got this street heavy fashion new york rockers rap aggression rebellion intensity particularly to me they stand out more because of its loud nature and because of how in your face the the messaging is with regards to the record that it's complementing it was essentially about getting those standout records which have such complementing artworks and bringing them all together so that i can arrive at a common theme for this new single that he was you know he was going to be putting out 
and it was amazing just just listening to his discography at the same time as well diving into his production style and tapping into that gritty unapologetic nature and with the help of that i put together a mood board that formed the the basis of the direction i should be taking for the artwork kevin sent me a reference photo of this golden globe that had the word soul just stamped on it he wanted something along those lines and i was like okay what if i take this what if i take this literally i wanted something that would symbolize an appropriate version of that image tells the story that in harmony with the record what i did was to get a hold of this chromed out globe that almost looked like a cage and i was like okay what if we take this globe okay like this the same concept that that he has in mind because ultimately it's about bringing his vision to life it was this chromed out globe that looked almost as if it was a cage because what the song says is about you getting trapped in your own perception about the world and tying that in with the materialistic value and you being trapped in your own thoughts i think it, it just it just made even more sense to go with a more gold chrome dark globe that's just like yeah i think it perfectly like something that would perfectly sum up one being trapped in that world of false perception but you're also talking about the world kind of like the double meaning of sorts accompanying that would be these gritty textures especially grunge gave it away i was like okay i have to i have to put this on the forefront i went for this more new york street gritty fashion uh aesthetic where it's it's more like punk and rebellious something that's um you know almost like off course and unconventional along with that would be these bold colors and bold fonts especially like the title of the song gold it's in this spray painted effect but also not letting it go too fancy so that it's readable enough this is a message that has to be sent out to the world and it's something that uh, we have to be on the lookout for and this is like a coming of a new age this is the dawn of a new era and that kind of a rebellious nature is what i had to incorporate with the artwork we kind of bounced ideas back and forth and then what i did was made four different versions of the first draft of the artwork So the first two versions of it would be like the original artwork and the second version of that would go on to be just a different text placement so that the like the information like the written text flows better. The other one was more of this experimental compositional message sort of thing, but the the second draft of the artwork which had two versions of its own were inverted versions of the first two versions of that first draft. So what I realized was when I inverted the colors when i flipped it gave it a more darker background it it called for a much stronger message because of just because of how contrasting the elements were and i'm like okay this stands out more personally i was more impressed with these the second draft and the two versions that i was able to make out of the second draft the the more darker literally the more darker themed version uh, with like this black background and like the white spray painted effect and actually having the the word or like the title of the record gold in this gold uh, you know gold plated spray painted effect uh, it just made more sense as opposed to the first one which had gold written in blood red so uh, this just comes as a result of me experimenting with different you know different colors and just letting loose and not kind of confining myself because hey, this is ultimately this is art and that's the thing I and mean, this is the beauty of what we do we shouldn't uh, you know confine ourselves uh, in this a uh, habitual way of working and that's how working with Kevin kind of just just you know broke those boundaries for me I was like okay I think I should just go ahead and just mess around with it a little more until I finally ended up getting four different versions I mocked it up on a CD disc just for him to get context sent it over to Kevin and he was like okay this is going somewhere but we got to take it to another level and I was like man okay he he hit me back saying the cd of the first draft and let's have that in an apocalyptic environment and just have it lying on the ground so he wants that artwork as a relic in the midst of the aftermath of that apocalypse so what i did was took another mock up mocked up the the first draft of that artwork then ultimately it was just about you know finding the the right images that you know i was you know able to use Uh, appropriately for my composition it was just about finding the the right tone of the image making sure that all those elements blend in with the initial background of the the final artwork i was able to add more context to it by adding like this extra uh, cityscape and uh, it's just just like more smoke and like sparks flying 
as opposed to leaving it just that and that went on to add much more context adding this little lens flare also to um, the cd relic just made it stand out so much more because not only that you are having this artwork which already is extremely bright in terms of its visual nature against an entire environment which is dark and grimy so that automatically calls for contrast and having this having this intense smog coming out of the cityscape and just polluting the sky again just adding more context to the entire theme of the song using the background of that smog i was able to place the the title of the record and, and kevin's logo so that that calls for contrast over there and you're able to you're able to see what's written and with uh, and the, what i realized was i had this there was this little uh, space towards the there was this little space that was remaining and i just felt like it was kind of empty towards the top left of the artwork and i personally at the time what i thought while creating was i don't want to go ahead and add more elements there instead i'll just like cover it up by adding a little nuance of having a having a duct tape it's just one of those things that made it look cool you can just mess around with it. like it's okay it's not necessary for everything to have a reason behind why you're doing it i just felt like okay this was something that's um, not only can i cover up and make utilize that empty space that was remaining but also having that duct tape just solidified the entire flow of that information it just it just directs you to the title of the record and more than that having another nuance of having this black and white caution strip on the left side of the artwork it just made so much more sense and the cd mock up already being bright on its own against a grammy background it just automatically had a lot of contrast and it just flows well and that's you know that's what i thought and that was my final judgment after i put it all together just doing a little bit of a color correction making sure that the tones were right more than anything was to you know embody the aesthetic kevin rudolph has had all this while which is extremely unique to him but also the the overall aggressiveness and that that rebellious nature like just by looking at it you're supposed to be feeling the entire message of the song and where it's coming from which is essentially the aim of a cover artwork which goes for any single or for any album right once the final artwork is put together cross my fingers in the hopes that he would uh, he would like it i before i sent it across to him i played the record personally to myself again and i was just looking at the artwork for 3 minutes straight and while listening to the song i was like okay i think yeah the cityscape the sounds i can feel the environment just by looking at the artwork alone and with what the record is trying to say so i was like okay i think i think this is the one let me just make a few iterations of this artwork and those iterations were having some cool nuances written on the duct tape and just so that it adds more of a flair to it and there's context as far as the origins of the single is concerned the same information in a different color palette another one without the duct tape another one without the text and the duct tape entirely just keeping the artwork alone just in case I had my fingers crossed to send the record back to him fortunate for me to hear that this was something that he just instantly resonated with and i'm glad that it worked out that way none of it was calculated i think all of it just came together organically and i mocked this one up uh, as well on a cd just just for just for clarity sent it back to him and got the approval that yep this is the one and another thing was another interesting thing was spotify uh, you know spotify like distributors for spotify and all these streaming platforms they have certain uh, certain criteria when it comes to the overall appeal of an album artwork like i had a version of the artwork where one of the uh, one of the core lyrics of the song was like repeated as a pattern over the artwork just to kind of make it seem as if it was some sort of barricaded environment by having that statement just repeated all over but apparently the distributors wouldn't allow it you're not allowed to have your lyrics written on your artwork even if you're trying to make a statement there that's just not allowed so that like stuff like that was new to me but which is why I had to end up making you know different iterations but some elements were there some were not so that we could find the right one that's uh, ideal for release we finished it up in like a day's time uh, it was just a one day affair it just it just came together quickly organically and he was in that headspace i was in that headspace we just it was a it was a mutual click once again just like you know shout out to kevin for for getting me on board with this it's unreal because uh, kevin was 
one of those guys I really used to, to listen, especially back in the day, like late 2010s, when I discovered the you know, the entire Young Money family. Um, you know, going back to those Let It Rock days, and I made it in the city. It was unreal that, you know, a decade later, I would actually end up working with him. Once the album was ready and once uh, I got the approval that, okay, this is this is it and we're going forward with it. It just felt, it, it felt amazing because this was something that, uh, you know, as a, as a 10 year old kid was something that I pictured. It may not have been in this format where I'm like professionally working with them, but I did picture meeting my heroes and hanging out with them. And to see it, to see it happen 10 years later, like we literally went on Instagram live yesterday for almost half an hour to promote the single. I'm going to be re-uploading that on my YouTube channel in its entirety so that you can, you guys can enjoy it. It's also there on my Instagram. You can check it out there as well. So I, I, I just feel, I just feel extremely honored and I cannot thank uh, Kevin enough for, for getting me on board. This is, it's insane. It's insane that this is actually happening. What I realized working with Kevin, you know, he told me like, just don't, do not be afraid when it comes to breaking boundaries. If there's anything that I've learned working on this one single piece of art alone, is that I think uh, a lot of us sometimes just get too caught up in terms of having a subconscious framework when it comes to uh, composing, you know, a, a certain design, whatever it may be, even if it's like a social media post or a banner or whatever, right? Just to go all out experimenting and just, just I think with the fear that we might end up creating something that looks probably disastrous. But I think that comes at a disadvantage where you're not breaking those boundaries to kind of experiment with things and that could give you a higher probability of creating something even better than what you could end up expecting. So that is like the biggest, biggest takeaway working on a piece like this. But with that being said, Kevin's latest single, it's called Gold. It's out now. It's on all streaming platforms. You guys can check it out. I'm going to be linking the record below to all its uh, different platforms. It's out on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and everywhere else. Do follow Kevin on Instagram. It's at Kevin Rudolph on Instagram and also at Kevin Rudolph on Twitter. Kevin, once again, thank you so much, man. This is insane. I can't believe this actually happened. Hoping to do more, you never know. And, and guys, if you like this episode, Please do consider giving it a like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. It helps in building the community. Until then, guys, more content coming your way next week. And take care. Stay safe. Peace.